I got a coach in London who's asking me in the program, learn some great routines for building belt voice in the head voice. So before I go into that real quick, belt voice is one of eight physical modes. It's characterized by a few positions and configurations in the mechanism, in the larynx and stuff, what have you. Oftentimes, good belting doesn't have to have these things, but oftentimes it's characterized by a slightly higher larynx position, okay? Um, typically a higher closed quotient on the vocal folds. That's just fancy voice lesson talk for, for the amount of left vocal fold, right vocal fold, closed quotient is the amount of time that the vocal folds remain closed versus open in the oscillation cycle, okay? Oscillating meaning they're they're they're, they're oscillating and vibrating, okay? And generally speaking, we want a high closed quotient. So if you look at my hands, this is a high closed quotient, right? The amount of time the, the vocal folds are closed are high. You want that in singing, okay? And belt voice gives you a high closed quotient. Belt voice also has a high TA musculature engagement, it's sort of a TA dominant position. TA is referring to a little muscle inside the mechanism that is responsible for um, for for um, the uh, 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 thick, thickening the, the vocal folds. All right, for for the compression on and in the compression and the thickness of the closed quotient on the vocal folds. It's not a perfect definition, but it's close to it. All right. So that's belting, and and the practical answer would be belting would be uh, you know chest voice high. The 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 experience as a listener as a singer is sort of taking your chest voice high, all right, which is something that we all want to do, all right. You don't want to just sing falsetto in the head voice. So what do you do? Training routine. Number one, in the four pillars of singing, you're going to warm up, all right. You've got to do, you've got to do the warm ups, all right. Always warm up your voice and always warm up with good cry vocal mode in the mechanism. Make sure that you are, these are vocal folds, my rubber band is a metaphor for vocal folds. Make sure that you are thinning out the vocal folds, all right, um, which also helps you with close quotient and it removes pharyngeal constriction. So you're going to engage in cry vocal mode in everything you do, starting with the warm ups. okay? Back to the answer. Warm up with lots of cry vocal mode. After you get done with that, what you need to do is go to the onsets, watch the onset lectures in the program, and then view the onset demonstrations in the program. And the two best onsets to dive right into for, um, for, for belt boys are the dampen and release onset and the attack and release onset. The dab and release onset, among other things, is characterized by the fact that it starts with plosives, all right? Plosives are a family of consonants in language that pop and explode. These are the plosives. B, B, D, 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 D. Okay, notice how they kind of pop, they pop, they pop. Those are plosives, all right? And it just so happens that if you train Onsets, which just means the beginning, just means the start. Big, big, big. If you just train that, then what happens is off of a plosive, you get a high close quotient. Remember, we talked a little bit about that. All right. So you get a really nice, beefy, meaty, chesty configuration if you train with plosive onsets, or what we call in TVS the dampen and release onset. The other onset that's really great for building the strength and resilience and endurance, high close quotient, and all of the mechanism for belting is the attack and release onset. The attack and release onset, or otherwise known as the glottal attack. Okay? The glottal attack is when the vocal folds come together in a controlled, I underscore controlled, a controlled chaotic crash. Now, when I say chaotic crash, you might think, oh, that sounds dangerous or that sounds like it might hurt your voice. No, no, it's not. As a matter of fact, glottal attacks, if done properly, are one of the healthiest things you can do for your voice. There's just no, no doubt about it, all right? So 
You just got to make sure that you're doing them properly. So this is a glottal attack or a controlled chaotic crash of the focal folds. And the important point, the, the important piece is when I say controlled, meaning done properly. I'm not barking like a dog. What I'm doing is I'm coming in with cry mode. So I so I I thin down my vocal folds with a little bit of weepy cry mode. Got a little bit of weepy cry mode as I engage in the attack and release onset. One other thing about the attack and release onset, it starts with vowels. All right. If your onset starts with vowel, if it's a vowel, it's a glottal attack. It's an attack and release onset. So here they are. Okay, those are glottal attacks. All right, notice they're all vowels. Okay, glottal attacks are really fantastic for building the strength of vocal fold compression and again, high plus quotient. So, then what we do at TBS is we take a dampen and release onset of plosive, big. And we take an attack and release onset, um, a vowel, which is a glottal attack, a, and in between the two, in between the plosive onset and the attack and release onset at the top, we put in a melodic fifth siren. Okay? And we train on either a or a. Ah. So what I'm describing for you is an integrated training routine. These are training routines that integrate onsets, vowels, and the training content and the skills and the media that comes with the program. So this is the uh, uh, integrated training routine. Uh, it actually has a name. It's in the program. You can learn more about it in the program. It's called Strength Building Number Three. It's characterized by a dampen and release onset at the bottom, an attack and release onset at the top. And we're going into an eighth out. I'll do a couple for you. In the seed. I said, big, 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 big. All right. I stop. I take a breath. I come off the top with a glottal attack, a pure vowel. <laughs> That's the workout. Notice when I cut, the whole thing sits on a platform of crime up. Next. Big, big. Need to take my own advice. I didn't warm up before this, but yeah, we're gonna do it anyways. To the F sharp. training have fun have fun you got to have fun and I'm not just saying that to sort of be like okay can okay, have fun and you know because we because we're all got to be happy and and you know I'm not trying to be nice no I really mean it as a training technique try to have fun when you're training otherwise you wash out you got to keep it fun that's one reason why we use microphones they're fun all right let's keep going and then I said with cry mode, you hear the cry, you hear the weeping. In with my glottal attack. Notice I'm not just shouting, I'm going to cry into it. Hey, hey, hey. You hear that little weep, the little, the little whimper. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, so that's a quick lesson on the jab and release onset, the attack and release onset. How we plug them into vowels, singing vowels, A or A, um, and we use melodic sirens. And, and I'm just telling you, that's answering the question, teacher in London. That's one of the best things you can do, you and your students can do, to quickly build belt strength and sing boomy in the headlights.